Hi friends, Miss Lara here. We are back to reading about the Baudelaire orphans and we are on to chapter 12. The last chapter we read was chapter 11 where um, Lemony Snicket, the author, had taken us out to see what was going on with Violet. She was doing stuff outside and then that was, you know, during all the mayhem that was going on inside with Sunny getting bit on the chin again and Stefano saying, oh no, it's not a big deal. And then like revealing the fact that he knew that it wasn't a big deal because he knew a lot about snakes. And then that was all going on inside. But meanwhile, back at the ranch or that phrase he was using, um, Violet was outside going through something and then something clicked. There was a light bulb basically at the end where her face lit up the way it did when all the pieces of something were fit together properly. So something has occurred to Violet. She has a plan now. So let's see what that plan is in chapter 12. I promise you that this is the last time I will use the phrase, meanwhile, back at the ranch. But I can think of no other way to return to the moment when Claus has just explained to Mr. Poe what Sonny had meant by shouting, aha! And now everyone in the reptile room was staring at Stefano. Sonny looked triumphant, Claus looked defiant, Mr. Poe looked furious. Dr. Lucafont looked worried. You couldn't tell how the incredibly deadly viper looked because of the facial expressions of snakes being hard to read. Stefano looked back at all these people silently, his face fluttering as he tried to decide whether to come clean, a phrase here which means admit that he's really Count Olaf and up to no good, or perpetrate his deception, a phrase here which means lie, lie, lie. Stefano, Mr. Poe said and coughed into his handkerchief. Claus and Sonny waited impatiently for him to continue. Stefano, explain yourself. You have just told us that you are an expert on snakes. Previously, however, you told us you knew nothing of snakes and therefore couldn't have been involved in Dr. Montgomery's death. What is going on? When I told you I knew nothing of snakes, Stefano said, I was being modest. Now, if you will excuse me, I have to go outside for a moment and you weren't being modest, Claus cried. You were lying, and you're lying now. You're nothing but a liar and a murderer. Stefano's eyes grew wide, and his face, face clouded in anger. You have no evidence of that, he said. Yes, we do, said a voice in a doorway, and everyone turned around to find Violet standing there with a smile on her face and evidence in her arms. Triumphantly, she walked across the reptile room to the far end where the books Claus had been reading about the Mamba de Mal were stacked in a pile. The others followed her walking down the aisles of reptiles. Silently, she arranged the objects in a line on top of a table. The glass vial with the sealed rubber cap, the syringe with the sharp needle, the small bunch of folded papers, a, laminated, a card laminated in plastic, the powder puff and the small hand mirror. What is all this? Mr. Poe said, gesturing to the arrangement. This, Violet said, is evidence, which I have found in Stefano's suitcase. My suitcase, Stefano said, is private property, which you are not allowed to touch. It was very rude of you, and besides, it was locked. It was an emergency, Violet said calmly, so I picked the lock. How did you do that? Mr. Poe asked. Nice girls shouldn't know how to do such things. My sister is a nice girl, Claus said, and she knows how to do all sorts of things. Rufik, Sunny agreed. Well, we'll discuss that later, Mr. Poe said. In the meantime, please continue. When Uncle Monty died, Violet began, my siblings and I were very sad, but we were also very suspicious. We weren't suspicious, Claus exclaimed. If someone is suspicious, it means they're not sure. We were positive that Stefano killed him. Nonsense, Dr. Lucafont said. As I explained to all of you, Montgomery Montgomery's death was an accident. The Mamba du Mal escaped from its cage and bit him, and that's all there is to it. I beg your pardon, Violet said, but that is not all there is to it. Claus read up on the Mamba du Mal and found out how it kills its victims. Claus walked over to the stack of books and opened the one on top. He had marked his place with a small piece of paper, so he found what he was looking for right away. The Mamba du Mal, he read out loud, is one of the deadliest snakes in the hemisphere, noted for its strangulatory grip, used in conjunction with its deadly venom, giving all of its victims a timbrous hue, which is ghastly to behold. He put the book down and turned to Mr. Poe. 
Strangulatory means we know what the words mean, Stefano shouted. Then you must know, Claus said, that the Mamba du Mal did not kill Uncle Monty. His body didn't have a timbrous hues. Tenebrous. I don't actually know if I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> but anyway, it means the dark, dark hue, right? But, and he was not dark. He was very white. It was pale as could be. That's true, Mr. Poe said, but it doesn't necessarily indicate that Dr. Montgomery was murdered. Yes, Dr. Lucapont said. Perhaps just this month, the snake didn't feel like bruising its victim. It is more likely, Violet said, that Uncle Monty was killed with these items. She held up the glass vial with the sealed rubber cap. This vial is labeled Venom du Mal, and it's obviously from Uncle Monty's cabinet of Venom samples. Then she held up the syringe with the sharp needle. Stefano, Olaf, took this syringe and injected the venom into Uncle Monty. Then he poked an extra hole so it would look like the snake had bitten him. But I loved Dr. Montgomery, Stefano said. I would have had nothing to gain from his death. Sometimes when someone tells a ridiculous lie, it is best to ignore it entirely. When I turn 18, as we all know, Violet continued, ignoring Stefano entirely, I inherit the Baudelaire fortune and Stefano intended to get that fortune for himself. It would be easier to do so if we were in a location that was more difficult to trace, such as Peru. Violet held up the small bunch of folded papers. These are tickets for the Prospero leaving Hazy Harbor for Peru at five o'clock today. That's where Stefano was taking us when we happened to run into you, Mr. Poe. But Uncle Monty tore up Stefano's ticket to Peru, Claus said, looking confused. I saw him. That's true, Violet said. That's why we had to get Uncle Monty out of the way. He killed Uncle Monty. Violet stopped for a minute and shuddered. He killed Uncle Monty and took this laminated card. It's Monty's membership card for the Herbological Society. Stefano planned to pose as Uncle Monty to get on board the Prospero and whisk us away to Peru. But I don't understand, Mr. Poe said. How does Stefano even know about your fortune? Because he's really Count Olaf, Violet said, exasperated, as she had to explain what she and her siblings and you and I knew the moment Stefano arrived at the house. He may have shaved his head and trimmed off his eyebrows, but the only way he could get rid of the tattoo on his left ankle was with this powder puff and hand mirror. There's makeup all over his left ankle to hide the eye, and I'll bet if we rub it with a cloth, we can see the tattoo. That's absurd, Stefano cried. We'll see about that, Mr. Poe replied. Now, who has a cloth? Not me, Claus said. Not me, Violet said. Gweel, Sonny said. And if nobody had a cloth, we might as well forget the whole thing, Dr. Lucafont said. But Mr. Poe held up a finger to tell him to wait. To the relief of the Baudelaire orphans, he reached into his pocket and withdrew his handkerchief. Your left ankle, please, he said sternly to Stefano. But you've been coughing into that all day, Stefano said. It has germs. If you are really who the children say you are, Mr. Poe said, the germs are the least of your problems. Your left ankle, please. Stefano, and this is the last time, thank goodness, we'll have to call him by his phony name, gave a little growl and pulled his pants leg up to reveal his ankle. Mr. Poe knelt down, rubbed at it for a few moments. At first, nothing appeared to happen, but then like a sun shining through clouds at the end of a terrible rainstorm, the faint outline of an eye began to appear. Clearer and clearer it grew until it was as dark as it had been when the orphans first saw it, back when they had lived with Count Olaf. Violet Claus and Sunny all stared the eye, and the eye stared back. For the first time in their entire lives, the Baudelaire orphans were happy to see it. That's the end of that chapter. There is still more left to go. There is another chapter, um, but that's where it's ending it for now. So that's where I'm ending the video for now. I will see you guys later. And I think, what is this? Is this the seventh video? We've done seven videos now in conjunction with uh, Lemony Snicket's series of unfortunate events, The Reptile Room. I'll see you at the next video. You guys be nice to people.